everybody. Um, <clears throat> um, sorry, I've got a little uh, bit of a cold or something, so I'll try not to sneeze and act too crazy. Um, this is Jessica. I'm sitting here in my studio with a quilt block. Um, hang on, let me figure this out. My, I had to borrow my kid's tripod um, for their, their phone. They wanted to be YouTube stars, and um, um, I don't think that that worked out for them a whole lot, but hold on just a second. Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, all right, so this is a crazy quilt block that came from a really old quilt. Sometimes uh, people ask me if um, I'll restore or repair quilts that maybe their grandmother gave them or um, a precious aunt um, or something like that. And this quilt was no different. It was given to my client and she would like it repaired. And so it is a crazy quilt um, that is foundation pieced. And so this is the foundation, and this is all the little pieces that are sewn to this foundation to make this block. And this quilt has some significant issues, so I took all the, the quilt apart. Obviously, this is one of the blocks. It had a giant hole in it. Um, some of the other blocks have smaller uh, problems, um, little tiny holes that uh, need to be repaired uh, but we're just going to look at this one for right now and so this quilt block let's see I already started taking this off this is going to have to be replaced um, I think this might be mildew um, I'm not entirely certain older quilts can be prone to that kind of thing so it wouldn't be surprising but it needs to come off um, even though this fabric is is relatively strong and we would have otherwise left it on there. This, however, is not. Uh, this has a hole in it. And that is not going to work. So this whole corner needs to come off. And the way that I do that is I use a tiny little pair of scissors. Ta-da! And I use a seam ripper like this. And so this is a really cool seam ripper I got from one of the quilting groups. I don't know where people get them or make them or whatever, but I love them. And so um, to use a seam ripper, uh, people think you just kind of stick it in there and rip. Well, the problem with that is, is that if you stick this in and you're going to tear something, you're going to poke it through the fabric. And we already have holes in the quilt. We don't want to put more in there. And so, um, <clears throat> what I do, let me get all this straightened up. What I do is I take this and the ball of the seam ripper, that's this little ball, I put it between the layers. And if you apply a little bit of pressure, um, you can just gently, gently rip. You hear it? It's very satisfying. And... You can do that without putting a hole in your quilt or the whatever you're sewing. Um, if you're sewing something that uh, is a quilt or it's making um, uh, like a, if you're making a dress or something like that for one of your kids or grandkids, then... Um, a lot of times with newer fabric, you can just clip the first couple of seams with like a little pair of scissors, or the stitches rather, and then you can just tear it, and <clears throat> as long as it's not something that's on the bias, then it should tear off pretty easily, and it's not a big deal. But you can't do that with older fabric, because um, uh, it, it'll tear. And like I said, we already have enough holes in the quilt. And so this whole corner needs to come off. And you can see this is the foundation. I said this was a foundation piece block. This is the foundation. And the foundation for this block is in pretty good shape. So we're going to keep it. And I'm not going to take all the pieces off. Which I had to do with another one of these blocks. Um, I had to take the whole uh, block apart. And let's see, can't 
hardly talk and do this at the same time and listen to what's going on in the background of my house. And so my kids are out of school. They're done with school. I homeschool. Um, so we finished school a little bit early this year. I'm pretty glad because it gets me a lot more time to be in this studio and do stuff like this. And I really love it. And I'm so excited to give this back to the lady who gave it to me um, to where she can use it. And I know that she's looking really forward to it. Okay, so this is all apart. And we saved the foundation. So there's no holes in the foundation. And so this I'll steam. And um, that'll close some of this up. If you are quilting and you make a mistake and you leave holes in your fabric, most of the time you can just use a good steam, <clears throat> steamy iron and um, it'll close all that back up. So this is part of the fun part about quilt repair is sometimes figuring out how these things are put together is interesting. So ideally foundation piece blocks, you lay a piece here and you sew the seam and then you iron it down <clears throat> and then you'll have... You see that this little bit left and then you would sew this and then this gets ironed down and everything is trimmed off to the square but this um, it appears that maybe uh, whoever put this quilt together missed a spot um, and so they just laid this over the top and then they just stitched this down um, which obviously works too um, it's not a whole lot different from quilting um, I don't do quilt police rules except for fabric. <clears throat> I do tell people they, they need really, really great fabric because you want your quilt to last a whole long time. Um, but you know, back when people first started quilting, they used what they had and everything from, uh, clothes that had kind of, uh, been worn past their prime or feed sacks. They quilted with whatever they could. The quilts were very functional. That was their purpose. And so, anyway. Alright, so I think that's going to be good enough for this one. Let me finish taking this off here. And I have to resist the urge to pull this. I always just want to give it a good tug. It's never a good idea. It never works out well for me. And so I think what I'm going to do now is I need to figure this out. How can I sew this back on? And so I think I'll just do what this quilter did originally. And that is leave this to the side. And then I will sew another piece of fabric here and then add a corner. Now, is it going to look exactly like this? Probably not. Um, this is, like I said, it's older fabric and to find that would be very, very difficult. And it was probably somebody's shirt or nightgown or something like that, which I think is precious. And so I have a ton of scraps, just like any other quilter probably does. And so I have all of my scraps sitting here in this bucket. And so I'm going to use, I think, this for the lighter color. And then, let's see. What am I going to use for that other side? Maybe this on the corner to kind of mimic that red if it's big enough. Um, oh, look. Oh, no, I don't like that. That's really stiff. Somebody somebody asked me to look at that. Um, this fabric actually bleeds, so we don't want to use that. Let's see. That's not going to be hardly big enough either. So we'll just go with this. Um, <clears throat> this will just stick on the corner, so this piece now will have to be bigger to cover uh, the foundation. Let's see. It's hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time, but I wanted to show you. So here's this, and then I will take the 
this part. Let's see if I can get that set back up. My kid insisted this would be easy, but I don't think they know what they're talking about. Their definition definition of easy is definitely different than mine. So yeah, this will work. And so, anyway, I just need to trim this and then I'll trim this to fit in this corner and then I'll trim the whole block and I will post a picture of this as soon as I get done with this block and everybody can see what it looks like. But if anybody comes to you and asks if you can fix somebody's quilt, um, I would just tell you to go for it and if you don't feel confident 